Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi Puday Leiden. Hello Leiden and welcome to the newest episode of our weekly English speaking show. As you know, our show is about stories, stories of international community living in Leiden. And today we have two amazing guests representing the international community. We have Svetlana Kleiner from Russia. Welcome to our <laughs> studio. And we have Gabor Patorsky from Hungary. Hello. Hello. So, why don't we start from a short introduction from each one of you. Svetlana, why don't we start from you? Who is Svetlana? Uh, so, I'm uh, from St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, I came here uh, in 2009, uh, no, 18 actually, but I moved to Leiden in 2019. Uh, so, very shortly before <laughs> everything closed down. Uh, I'm originally a linguist, uh, so I uh, worked in academia and now I still kind of work in academia because I worked uh, work in Springer Nature, which is an academic publishing house. Um, oh, that's amazing. So yeah, I live alone with my dog um, and waiting for my family to rejoin me <laughs> after this all is over. Beautiful. And you have a Peterburgian dog. Yes, I have a dog from St. Petersburg. <laughs> that's fantastic. Welcome. Thank you. What about you, Gabor? Uh, Who is Gabor? Gabor, so, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> I'm a musician, I'm a guitarist and a guitar teacher. And uh, uh, we arrived to Leiden in November last year. Very um, fresh. Yes, and all during the lockdown, so it's quite interesting, walking the empty streets and uh, uh, meeting fellow, uh, fellow Leideners with dogs. Uh, actually, I haven't met before. <laughs> Before that, I lived in London for like more or less 10 years, then in Hungary a little bit, and before London in Hungary a little bit. I studied here in The Hague uh, 15 years ago or maybe more. We usually ask our guests to bring little items that have, or could be big items too, that have an emotional value to you. Did you bring us your items? I did. Yeah, great. <laughs> did I, yes. What did you bring us with Lana? So, uh, basically, I think that I will move with this one that's here yeah. mm. here <laughs> yeah so that's uh, a very uh, naive portrait of uh, my second dog who actually died a couple of years ago oh, no. uh, very suddenly and uh, so basically I moved here with one of my dogs and the other stayed back in St. Petersburg with uh, the other part of my family waiting uh, for them to rejoin us and she won't be rejoining us um, so, yeah, and a friend of mine drew this, uh, which was um, a sketch, and uh, she was planning to, well, basically, I will learn to draw Tesla, <laughs> but that was the last drawing she ever made. That was a name, uh, Tesla? Yes, Tesla. So, um, yeah. Now, rest in now peace, I have Tesla. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for sharing Tesla with us. <laughs> what about you, Kapoor? Okay, my object is still in my pocket. Okay, it's a badge, uh, says every child a musician. And uh, I worked for a uh, kind of music uh, inclusivity project in London in the borough of Newham, which is the most densely popula populated area of London. A lot of people from all around the world, over, over 100 languages are spoken there. Really, really great. It's a, it's a great idea. It's sadly not, it doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately, but. Um, I don't know, ever since I'm looking for something like that. So, something inclusive and uh, something really, really uh, multicultural. And open. Maybe you could create it here, That's yourself. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for sharing the nice project with us. Um, and also we did short profiles um, about your life in Leiden. Why don't we start from you, Svetlana? Let's see, where did you take us? Oh, God. <laughs> Hello, Svetlana. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. And in the middle of this windy, yes. crazy weather, yes. we are stuck at a children's park. I think it's a nice place to talk to a linguist, is it? Might be. Also, as good as any. So how you ended up in Leiden? Uh, so, um, I went to Belgium first uh, to uh, work on a project um, at Kent University. And then I got a short-term grant uh, in Leiden University. So that's how I ended up here. 
where do you mostly go to in Leiden? Uh, <laughs> with Corona times, not much. But I actually move around a lot because I have a dog, so um, I walk about every morning, every afternoon, and every evening um, along the canals, um, in the parks, basically wherever she takes me. Any favorite place where you go and sit and relax? Um, go and sit and relax. I actually do that at home and I did it even before the pandemic. Um, but I do like uh, Hofleet. Um, and I do like, um, what's its name? No, I forgot it. So there's a very nice park over there. Older park. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. And I love it. Okay, so are you a very nerdy academic or a very social academic? I'm a very nerdy person. Okay. Yes, so I uh, don't have much of a social life, I'm afraid. Food, where do you mostly go? Cook home or delivery? Uh, cook home, uh, delivery from Chicken Way. I love their chicken. Um, and I also deliver sushi and you don't have the sushi that I like here in the whole country, I mean. Uh, which is Philadelphia roll, um, and uh, sometimes I go to have a nice steak. Where do you go? Uh, there's a restaurant, an Argentinian restaurant, uh, right next to where I live actually. What's the worst cliché that you find attached to Russians? Vodka. <laughs> I was going to ask you about yes, that. <laughs> vodka. I don't like vodka and I know actually very few people who like vodka uh i know why vodka has been associated with russia for years um but uh yeah no please no why were you in the children's park uh because uh well my dog doesn't take kindly to strangers oh, okay. and she would not take kindly to a man with a cam camera you know coming in yeah <laughs> so you had to um, yeah the... we had to do it outside i'm sorry <laughs> no problem so not a vodka lover not a vodka lover, no, no. Um, are people asking you what kind of Russian are you? Like, which Russian doesn't like vodka? Oh, uh, yeah, actually they do, yeah. uh, all the time. Uh, every time I go and drink with somebody, they go, oh, it's wine, it's not vodka. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, Gabor, let's see where did you take us. <laughs> Wow, Gabor, how are you? Good, thanks. Hello. What a surprise. I thought I'd let you serenade. Uh, who's this? Pamina, the cutest dog of Leiden. What brought you to Leiden? What brought us to Leiden? Um, this is a beautiful place. Uh, we ended up here half accidentally. Hello. And I think we were lucky because we came last year, November, in the middle of in the middle of the or beginning of the second wave of COVID, which is I studied here in the Hague 15 years ago, and uh, then I moved to London for 10 years, I guess. Yeah, and uh, after that, we lived a little bit in Hungary, and we came back last year, November, in the middle of the second wave of COVID. Oh, great! <laughs> so, how is life uh, amid? COVID? Well, uh, hopefully it's after and it's really, I'm really happy to see that it's opening up and it's finally starting. Uh, it was really interesting though, the last six months or eight months, uh, especially the beginning, it was like a ghost town. Uh, our dog had a fantastic social life with fellow dogs, but we, we were not really able to meet people apart from those who are walking their dogs as well. So it was really, really interesting, but finally it's over and something new starts. And where this uh, passion for music comes from? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, we 
my wife and I, we are, we are both musicians. Uh, I don't know, it just happened. Uh, for me, it was one particular song in, I don't know, 92 or 93, when I decided I want to be a guitar player. Uh, but I guess it's, it's, it's different for everybody. Uh, looks so pleased with your playing. Yeah, she, she really enjoys the sound of the guitar. Uh, interestingly, for higher voices, uh, she's really sensitive to higher ones. So, uh, for example, singing or, or an ambulance just passing by, she starts singing together. <laughs> but for, with a guitar, she sleeps. Oh, that is beautiful. Uh, when you were traveling, um, were, were you surprised by the perception of Russia um, among the Europeans? Oh, yeah. I mean... In uh, what ways? Yeah, I, I have actually... Uh, I've done a stand-up number in Amsterdam about that. So basically in dog parks you, you meet people and um, some of them go, oh, you're from Russia, so what do you think about Putin? And I don't really know what to say, so then I started uh, asking, what do you think about Putin? Mm. And um, a lot of them actually started telling me, well, actually, everything's okay with Putin, we should, you know, stop messing with Putin, we should uh, mind our own business. And then I ask, so what is like your own business and your own problems which you think you should, you know, and then you know where this is going, like we have too many Muslims, uh, we have, you know, too many immigrants. And uh, the next thing they go, uh, they, they do is they say, yeah, but you'll stay, will you? Like, you're fine. <laughs> so you're a good Russian, the rest yeah. are not. I don't know. I'm a good Russian, I'm a good immigrant because, you know, I look white enough. Uh, so, yeah, I've had a lot of strange conversations about uh, Russia, about Putin. We should, you know, stop messing with Putin or we should probably, you know, declare a war in Russia. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. How does it make you feel to be stereotyped by under those specific items like vodka, Putin? Things mm, like that. I guess everyone is stereotyped this way or another, and uh, whatever you do is like, yeah, you just talk. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I mean, aren't English stereotyped? Aren't American stereotyped? Oh, I mean, yeah. Everyone are, else. Everyone is stereotyped, yes. of course. Absolutely. What about you? To, to be honest, not. That's really? Um, you must be lucky. Not really. Um, Oh, I've tried to think, but um, it's different by country. So, like in the Netherlands, it looks like they they know where Hungary is and they sort of know what's happening. While in the UK, that's, that's a different kind of <laughs> <laughs> experience. Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. I've heard about that. Interesting. <laughs> so, <laughs> which which I also like. That's that's. I think that's a really um, hmm, non-confrontational approach to. Different people, yeah. so, okay, that's what you are. And um, are you composing music as well, or you are just playing other Sometimes I peoples? do, sometimes I do, uh, although um, not many things came out as, as my own composition. Mm. I, like, I like to co-write, co-work co songs yeah. with others, that's, that's more fun for me. But uh, yeah, mostly I perform, I would rather say I, I perform than, than compose. We spoke about um, the perception of Russia among the Europeans, what about the other way around? For example, when I say um, that I live in the Netherlands, um, all my Azerbaijani friends ask, like, is everyone gay in there? For some reason, their only perception of the Netherlands is the fact that there is a large community of LGBTQI. Um, what about among your community in Russia? How do they perceive Europe? Oh, a very different uh, layers. Mm. I mean, uh, there's this layer that we are European. There's a very strong uh, component of this European identity to uh, Russian, mm. uh, you know, to the Russian culture. Um, on the other hand, uh, we are not Europe uh, because, yeah, they're all gay there. And um, 
also because they're trying to impose their gay values, like uh, on um, the uh, government-owned uh, TV shows. Uh, they call Europe gay rope sometimes. Um, on the other hand, in the uh, liberal and, let's say, more educated circles, there's this idea that Europe is perfect, that everything here is great, and uh, everything here is amazing and perfect, and uh, it's, uh, well, a different facet of this, you know. The different All extremes. Are wrong, yes. Mm -hmm. The recent law uh, in the Hungary yeah, um, against the LGBTI mm -hmm. community, <laughs> Um, how did it make you feel? Like you live in Europe, and yeah. uh. li liberalism is one of the main values of uh, the European people. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to be honest, I never heard a better uh, explanation of how Hungary is. Just what Svetlana said, because uh, it is it is really really similar, really mm. almost the same, uh, both as society and how how they layered and the propaganda. Um, uh, as as this recent law, uh, well, that's 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 a copycat law comes from the Russian one. Uh, mm. I think yep. it was in a couple of years. Ah, uh, started in then. eleven in Saint Petersburg actually, oh, okay. and then in fourteen, I believe, it was uh, generalized to the whole oh, country. All right, so that took like six, seven years to take it over, but but it, it follows that sort of pattern. But I must say that it's not. Um, I don't think this is the Hungarian people's view. Mm. I do not believe that. I don't want to believe that. Uh, so those who voted for this recent government to stay in power in the last elections and will probably vote for them again, do not hate uh, different people. I don't think they are homophobic at any way. Maybe a small minority, yes. And uh, this was never, a, I don't know how you call that, never a promise or a plan from this government that they will they will discriminate mm. so it just came because they needed to divert attention from a different issue from another issue so they needed to make, make a bigger storm with this um, what do you think they're trying was, to cover sorry, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, if i if i was a uh, supporter of this government i would have felt cheated yeah honestly. you think mm -hmm. Is that how every voter of Orban feels, you think? I, I'm pretty sure that uh, a lot of people do feel this way, yes. Interesting. Um, I mean, they should. They should, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> should. Because that's not the case. No one said, you know, well, they vote for us, we're going to be homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the question is, Svetlana, do you think uh, the homophobia in Russia is driven by people or by the government, like uh, similar to Hungary, for example, oh. diversion or... It's both. Uh, quite recently, there was this, uh, actually, three days ago, uh, one of the uh, grocery store chains, mm. I'd say, um, that uh, presents itself as, you know, progressive, like organic, whatever. Uh, they decided to do a uh, Facebook uh, ad mm. which featured a same-sex family. And the backlash and the outrage was so huge uh, so uh, they had to well actually take it down they had to uh, say sorry to hurting the feelings of people who were hurt by seeing this photo uh, which is amazing in its own you know mm -hmm. our, our capacity and um, so it's this grassroots homophobia uh, a lot of people um, they they feel that uh, they're unsafe and it's um, becoming worse and worse. So there's more aggression, more hate crimes. Uh, quite recently they almost didn't sentence, he got a year I think, won't lie, mm. Google it up, it's a really crazy story. Uh, so a guy stabbed another guy because the other guy was gay. Uh, everybody saw it. Uh, he got away practically scot-free uh, because yeah, he was just overwhelmed with feelings I guess. Um, and uh, these are feelings of hate, and uh, it's uh, quite dangerous, especially for men, but for women as well. Um, and uh, uh, on the other hand, the government is kind of uh, tapping into this uh, reservoir and uh, channeling it to so right. Um, 
we have issues in the country, mm. the economy is going down, uh, you're living worse and worse every year. So uh, there are those people, hate those people, because they are trying to help uh, gay rope impose its gay values mm. on our country. And uh, they're making it uh, kind of, they're en enabling it and they're condoning it. Um, and uh, one of the chief propaganda um, outlets, uh, he was uh, actually uh, quoted once, and uh, it's everywhere over the internet, saying that uh, hearts of gay people who die should not be, you know, donated to other people so that you know other people should live. They should be burnt because that's yeah, that's a bad heart. I feel like I don't know Middle Ages vampire wars <laughs> kind of a thing. It's actually, like better in the Middle Ages. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Um, Gabor, you have lived um, outside of Hungary for a while. Yes. Um, when you go back, what kind of changes do you see in the society uh, compared to the times when you left? Yeah, well, that's interesting because uh, it's, it's all related to the recent and, and the ongoing political system. So, uh, just back to the uh, homophobia. Uh, what is interesting there, for example, if, if, if a similar thing happens, for example, Coca-Cola features mm. a gay couple, uh, it's always a politician first who comes against it. It's, it's never a citizen or, or, I don't know, a group of people who destroy the ads of Coca-Cola or stuff like that. It's not never a civilian boycott against it. It's always a politician standing up and saying something. And that generates, um, no, basically, that engages certain people to take part. Um, so uh, back to your question, um, I think a lot of people don't uh, don't don't stand up for their own own mm, interest. Let's say they they rather accept facts. They rather ac the accept that cool. okay, this country is like this. I try to live. Uh, I try to make the best out of it, and. Uh, Mm, that's a little bit, uh, I don't know, no, nobody should be, uh, I don't know, revolutionary and stuff like that, but um, it's a little bit too passive, what I feel. Uh, also, there are certain changes slowly sweeping in in education, for example, mm. um, which all about one thing. So, like, for example, in education, critical thinking has become something uh, uh, of a, of a non-value, so it's not really promoted. Uh, but it was interesting to see how kids don't, uh, I don't know, don't stop thinking, stop questioning things, you know, Could stop the being thinking. like obnoxious little kids asking you uncomfortable questions. No, they sit quiet, that's weird. So uh, something like this happening, it, it is a change and uh, yeah, we are like, uh, so let's say there's a country and that's me and uh, we're going two ways and then apart from each other instead of, of getting closer. Absolutely. Um, we both, actually all three of us have been <laughs> affected by the Soviet Union, yeah. right? We share <laughs> a very similar past, me from Azerbaijan, you from Russia and Hungary until 1990 yeah. because of the Warsaw Pact. Um, what do you remember from the Soviet Union, Svetlana? Ooh, so I was born in... 81, mm -hmm. the whole thing collapsed in 90. What I do remember is that in 1990, so one year before mm -hmm. this whole thing came down, um, we went to Tallinn, mm -hmm. uh, which was Estonia and uh, part of uh, the Soviet Union still. And uh, I was, what, eight? Um, yeah, nice, nice city. Um, shown this, shown that going back uh, and our teacher who was accompanying us um, she was like yeah so that was our last trip to Tallinn for a while <laughs> and we were like why right here eight-year-olds and mm. uh, she was like yeah because it's all going to shit <laughs> and, uh, I was really uh, puzzled by this uh, and uh, then I started watching the news and actually you know listening to the radio mm. and yeah <laughs> you could see that but uh, way before that what I remember was a uh, very fierce indoctrination uh, that happened to you uh, since you entered the kindergarten and 
way, way, way up to, to the end. Uh, so they actually taught us uh, a lot of interesting things. Um, you, might, you might call it imperial mindset because I grew up and lived in Russia. Uh, and that was a very weird thing to actually root out of myself later. Yeah, uh, yeah. takes time, especially if oh, you yeah. grew up in that environment oh, yeah. and then media um, indo indoctrinates you and plus the education system, everything is basically... Children's books. <laughs> yeah, you, you uh, boil in that pot. Yeah. What about you? What was it like for you, for a Hungarian to experience that? Well, it, it wasn't part of the Soviet Union, but it was well occupied and uh, very much closer to the Soviet mm -hmm. Union than anything else. Um, though it was called the, the happiest barack <laughs> 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 within, within the bloc, so there's a relative, um, I wouldn't call it freedom really, but it was not a tough dictatorship. It was a sort of... Uh, softer version. Ish, a softer one, um, which after the 1956 revolution was necessary, mm. because that was the... So that broke down resistance, measured if people enjoyed their relative uh, freedom and security, job security. And so therefore it looked like a peaceful thing. Um, ideolo ideologies in education was present as well. Um, funnily, it wasn't imperial at all because obviously we were part of the empire at some point. So it was like more communicated this way that uh, we are so happy to uh, we're so happy to be involved. You know? yeah. it, it's so good that we all share this, you know, and obviously uh, <laughs> nobody shared anything, but that's right. Um, uh, what I really remember smells and, and tastes back from that time. It was really interesting. Yeah, As a kid, so. those were the interesting <laughs> times, absolutely. Uh, coming back to Leiden, um, we asked you to share with us who is your favorite Leidner? I know you have been here a short period of time, but let's see. <laughs> Who do you share? Who is your favorite uh, Leidner, Svetlana? Uh, so I guess it will have to be the person, um, not this one, <laughs> this one, yes. <laughs> um, so uh, I actually didn't know uh, what he looked like until a couple of yes. <laughs> days ago, but I heard about the Leiden jar uh, at school. And that's how I actually knew Leiden existed somewhere <laughs> on the map. So, as far as I remember, a Leiden jar is a very primitive battery. Mm -hmm. um, and this was the person who well, spearheaded the pr project uh, that actually led to its uh, creation. So it's uh, Peter van uh, Musenbroek. Uh, we called him Musenbroek, I think. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was the um, 18th century, quite a long time ago. Nice story to know about Leidener, fellow Leidener. What about you, Kapoor? Who was okay. your... Okay. Uh, I've chosen this guy over here because, uh, well... Why? He's not a Leidener, though. He's not a Leidener, exactly. Uh, but, and he's but sticking his tongue out. He, he visited Leiden many times. Ah, okay. And... Uh, so well, that was your connection? My connection is that wherever Albert Einstein turned up, he was welcomed. Mm. And in an ideal world, what we want is to be welcomed wherever we are. If it's Leiden, then in Leiden, uh, wherever on earth, you know. And uh, so, I don't know, he's like a, a symbol of that for me, I guess, being welcomed. And that's all, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the only reason that's why I've chosen That's a nice twist <laughs> 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 to a fellow Leidener who is not Leidener. But thanks for yeah, sharing. But, but he was a light, and you know, when he I was mean, here, he was a light. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you are going by the um, analogy of water enters the jar and takes the shape of the jar. Perhaps, and, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Einstein comes to light and becomes lighter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, that works. That works fine as well. Well, the, good for us. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It was uh, fantastic having you um, at Hello Leiden. Thank you for Thank having you. us. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks. Um, well, that's the end of another show of Hello Leiden. Um, please watch us, share us, like us, most of all. Um, and if you are a fellow Leidener with an international background, please do email us at hello leiden at slotterstad.nl. We'll be waiting for you next time on Saturday at 9 p.m. Exactly. 
That was Zem Vasanova for Sota Stad TV. Good evening. Hello, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Good evening, Leiden. Здравствуй, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Bonjour, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Marhaba, Leiden. Ciao, Leiden. Hi, Podai, Leiden.